Surely you've heard of a 5-step plan before. You've probably also heard of a 12-step plan to deal with alcoholism or other drug-related treatments. But have you ever heard of a 39-step plan? No? Well, neither have I, because that sounds absolutely dreadful. Who would want to take that many steps just to try and deal with just about anything? So don't take the 39-step plan. Take this shortcut. But wait, how does that pertain to this game? You'll find out shortly. Actually, it'll take quite a while, but you'll find out. Hi, you folks, Fruit and Doggy here again, back to 39 Steps. <laughs> and I did double check when this game was released, and it was released in 2013. So, some of the different wordplay that has come up, I think it's been intentional. I guess I should research when the actual book itself was written. But, anyways, continuing on. Chirp, 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 more chirping, more birds. Probably should throw out some tweets. Tweet, tweet, tweet. The next morning, I witnessed from my room the arrival of two constables and a sergeant. Oh, that is what you asked for. They put their car in a coach house under the innkeeper's instructions and entered the house. 20 minutes later, I saw from my window a second car come across the plateau from the opposite direction. It did not come up to the end, but stopped 200 yards off in the shelter of a patch of wood. A mighty woody patch, that be. I noticed that its occupants carefully reversed it before leaving it. Very carefully. My plan had been to lie, to lie hid in my bedroom and see what happened. I had a notion that, if I could bring the police and my other more dangerous pursuers together, something might work out of it to my advantage. But now, I had a better idea. Slash your tires! Huh. Think. I guess you. Yeah, thank you! Oh. The glyphs! The glyphs! I must write the glyphs to open the window! And then jump out! I'm a crank! Crank that crank, baby! Crank it! Oh jeez, he stole a car. I stole gently out onto the plateau. I guess in those days you could just leave the car keys in the car, right? The wind seemed to bring me the sound of angry voices. Well, yeah, you just come into Grand Theft Auto. You may picture me driving that 40 HP car for all she was worth over the crisp moor roads on that shining May morning. Glancing back at first over my shoulder and looking anxiously to the next turning. Then, driving with a vague eye just wide enough awake to keep on the highway. I was thinking desperately of what I had found in Scudder's pocketbook. Then I had an accident. Then I crashed the car. I've deciphered it! The 15th day of June was going to be a day of destiny. A bigger destiny than the killing of a Dago. It was so big that I didn't oh, the end of the game and wanted to play a lone hand. That, I was pretty clear, was his intention. June Black Stone. I'm going left or right. Nonsense talk in Parliament. There was a real working alliance between France and Britain, and the two general staffs met every now and then and made plans for joint action in case of war. Well, in June a very great swell was coming over from Paris, and he was going to get nothing less than a statement of the disposition of the British Home Fleet on mobilisation. It was something uncommonly important. Okay. Yeah, I can't... I don't know why. It seemed like there wasn't very much voice acting, and then suddenly, BOOM! A whole lot of it. The bare bones of the tale were all that was in the book. These, and one queer phrase which occurred half a dozen times inside brackets. Thirty-nine steps was the phrase. I COUNTED THEM! 
39 steps. I counted them. High tide, 10.17 p.m. I could make nothing of that. You poor illiterate slobs. 10.17. That clearly calls for a colon. It was no question of preventing a war. That was coming, as sure as Christmas. Had been arranged, said Scudder, ever since February 1912. Carolitis was going to be the occasion. Just like Christmas. This war was going to come as a mighty surprise to Britain. Yeah. Carolitis' of death would set the Balkans by the ears. And then Vienna would chip in with an ultimatum. Russia wouldn't like that. And there would be high words. The highest! Would play the peacemaker and pour oil on the waters. Till suddenly she would find a good cause for a quarrel, pick it up, and in five hours, let fly at us. Pour oil on the water? That was the idea. And a pretty good one, too. I mean, I know oil and water don't mix. I just don't... The whole story was in the notes. With gaps, you understand, which he would have filled up from his memory. He stuck down his authorities, too, and had an odd trick of giving them all a numerical value and then striking a balance, which stood for the reliability of each stage in the yarn. So he was crazy. And I don't, I guess that was a progressive story. It didn't really matter which or you clicked on the notes. At least I hope not. Oh, there's the kamikaze plane. On the bare moor, I was at the airplane's mercy. My only chance was to get to the leafy cover of the valley. I mean, when I think of a valley, I think of wide open. Then came a thick wood where I slackened my speed. I slowed down because that wood was THICK! The thickest cut of wood you could imagine. Arr! Suddenly I heard the hooting of another car and re realized upon my horror that I was almost upon a Kipple gatepost through which a private road debouched on the highway. I clapped on my brakes, but my impetus was too great. I did the only thing possible and ran slap into the hedge on the right. So he is an irresponsible driver. <laughs> oh. Off road in! A branch of Hawthorne had got me in the chest, lifted me up, and held me while a ton or two of expensive metal. Slipped below. Slowly that thorn let me go. As I scrambled to my feet, a hand took me by the arm. I found myself looking at a tall young man. Ooh, he sure encounters a lot of men, doesn't he? I say, bless me, I'm dreadfully sorry. Are you hurt? Really, I must apologize. Bless my soul. Do tell me you're all right. My blame, sir. It's lucky that I did not add homicide to my follies. Well, that's the end of my Scotch motor tour. Well, it might have been the end of my life. Yeah, that tree closed on you something fierce. You plucked out a watch and study it. Eh, yeah, it's about lunchtime. You want a drink? You're, you're the right sort of fellow. I can spare a quarter of an hour. My house is two minutes off. I'll see you clothed and fed and snug in bed. Where's your kit, by the way? Is it in the barn along with the car? It's in my pocket. A toothbrush? I'm a colonial. I travel light. A colonial? By God, you're the very man I've been praying for. Are you by any blessed chance a free trader? Huh? No, I pay. I am. Oh, good show! Oh, righty oh, man. He patted my shoulder and hurried me into his car. I mean, he was going to have to abandon the car at some point, and. At the very least, I'd want to, you know, basically destroy it, maybe pour some dirt or sand in the fuel tank or whatever. Or clay! Clay! They really like their clay! Presently, we drew up before a comfortable-looking shooting box, and he ushered me indoors. Yes, go shoot something up there, boy. That's good. First, he flung half a dozen, dozen of his suits before me, for my own had been pretty well reduced to rags. 
I selected a loose blue serge, which differed most conspicuously from my former garments and borrowed a linen collar. Very nice linen. Then he hailed me to the dining room. Probably so we could eat. Thank you. You find me in a deuce of a mess, mister. Oh, by the way, you haven't told me your name. Uh, Twiston. Twiston? Any relation to old Tommy Twiston of the 60th? No? No. Well, you see, I'm the liberal candidate for this part of the world, and I had a meeting on tonight at Brattleburn, and that's my chief time, and an infernal Tory stronghold. Those Tories! The premier fellow, Crumpleton, come and speak for me tonight. Those Crumpleton. I've been tremendously built, and the whole place ground baited. This afternoon, I had a wire from the ruffian saying you've got influenza and blackpool. And here I am, left to do the whole thing myself. Oh, dreadful. I've been speak for ten minutes, and now I must go on for forty. And though I've been racking my brains for three hours to think of something, I simply cannot last the course. Now you've got to be a good chap and help me. You're not a very good politician if you can't talk for 40 minutes. The washout protection is in the colonies. All you fellows have the gift of the gab. I wish to heaven I had it. I'll be forevermore in your debt. We well, you sure haven't shut up for the brief time we've been interacting. I had very few notions about free trade, but I saw no other chance of getting what I wanted. What is it you wanted? Right. Um, I'm not much good as a speaker, but I'll tell them a bit about Australia. Oh. Whatever for? At my words, the carriers of the ages slipped from his soldier shoulders. I've collected Sir Harry. He lent me a big driving coat and never troubled to ask why I had started on a motor tour without possessing an ulster. I mean, I've got a Sir Harry now. Why do I need an ulster too? As we slipped down the dusty roads, the young man poured in my ears the simple facts of his history. I think I didn't have the gift of the gift. <laughs> what is he interested in? He knew about horses and jawed away about the derby entries, and he was full of plans for improving his shooting. The, intri the, the correlation between horses and shooting. I don't know if I like that much. Sir Harry was orphaned at an early age and was brought up by his uncle, who was a member of the British cabinet. I don't know why, but I know, I know it's a child, but he looks particularly short. He had gone around the world after leaving Cambridge, and then, being short of a job, his uncle had advised politics, but he had no preference in parties. Strange for a young man. He was liberal because his family had always been Whigs. His uncle pulled a few strings and posted Harry in Tweedale as a liberal candidate without any hope of winning over its conservative cons constitu constituents. I mean, somebody's got to lose that race for us, boy. Why not be you, huh? Go lose that race. Altogether, a very clean, decent, callow young man. He is very callow. Uh, surprising stop there. I can't really predict when they're going to come up. But anyways, I guess that's all for this episode. I'll see you around later, folks. And as always, fruit and doggy.